The objective of qualitative research is to understand the underlying reasons and motivations. Qualitative research is the opposite of quantitative research, which involves collecting and analyzing numerical data for statistical analysis. Because qualitative research uses non-numerical data in collecting and analyzing, it may be in the form of text, video, or audio. Qualitative research can be used to gather in-depth insights into a problem or generate new ideas for research. Commonly, ginagamit ito if you want to go deeper on the research problem, especially when discussing sensitive issues. May katangian ng qualitative research to showcase stories, identifying reasons, provide insights to understand concepts, opinions, and experiences. Wherein, hindi na lilimitahan ng research findings sa kung ilang percent ang nagsagot ng yes, ilan ang no, kung may significant relationship ba or differences. More than that, qualitative research examines the underlying reasons for their yeses and noes. It provides deeper understanding to why they answer yes or why no. Just like bakit sila nasatisfy sa product, bakit sila nakakaramdam ng insecurity pag nagtitiktok, bakit nahihirapan ng mga sudyante sa distance learning, bakit ang ibang tao ay takot magpabaksin. Meaning, qualitative research does not aim to generalize a big group of people like in quantitative research. Qualitative research focus more on the uniqueness and individuality, unfold reasons, and dig deeper understanding. If you want to get to know more about the differences between qualitative research and quantitative research, you may visit this video. Qualitative research is used to learn more about how people experience the world while there are numerous approaches to qualitative research. They all share the flexibility of retaining rich meaning when interpreting data. These approaches share some similarities but emphasize different aims and perspectives. So here are the different types of qualitative research. Number one is ethnography. Researchers immerse themselves in groups or organizations to understand their cultures. Ethno means people. Graphy means writing. When you combine it together, ethnography, writing about people. The ethnographic approach grows from anthropology, in which an entire culture is studied by an outsider. Anthropology means the study of human societies and cultures and their development. The most popular ethnographic approach is to clearly study the participants by immersing yourself or engaging yourself in the culture and taking written notes on observation and experiences. Ang mga ganitong research ipinapakita kung anong culture, beliefs, values, practices, language, norms, rituals, symbols, or material objects para maintindihan ng certain group of people. Number two is phenomenological research. Researchers investigate a phenomenon or event by describing and interpreting participants' life experiences. The goal of phenomenology is to understand how others or people view the world at kung paano ang kanilang opinion at ideya nagkakaiba based sa interpretasyon ng kanilang pinagdaanan.
Number three is case study. Case studies are in-depth investigations of a single person, group, event, or community. Case studies are commonly used in social, educational, clinical, and business research. It usually involves qualitative methods, but sometimes it can use quantitative. Case studies are good for describing, comparing, evaluating, and understanding different aspects of a research problem. When the goal is to acquire concrete, contextual, and in-depth information about a specific real-world topic, a case study is an acceptable research design. It helps the researcher to explore the key characteristic, interpretation, and implications of the case. By definition, case study is an in-depth and detailed investigation of the development of a single event, situation, or an individual over a period of time. While phenomenology is a study that is designed to understand the subjective, life experiences, and perspective of participants. Ethnography observes the entire group, while case study focuses on one specific aspect such as person, group, process, or activity. Number four is grounded theory. It is a research method concerned with the generation of theory. Researchers collect rich data on a topic of interest and develop theories inductively. Data collection and analysis occur simultaneously. Conducting grounded theory may deeper in the process and works in the opposite way to traditional research. Grounded theory will help you understand phenomena that aren't explained by current theories and paradigms. This approach provides a systematic and detailed data collection and analysis procedure. As a result, the research issue can be studied in great depth. The use of this approach in practice promotes creativity and critical thinking. Grounded theory methodology is time-consuming and difficult to conduct. There is a lot of room for bias caused by researchers. The presentation of research findings in grounded theory is not easy. Number 5. Biographical Study The study of a single life focusing primarily upon an individual. It is the collection and analysis of an intensive account of a whole life or a portion of a life. Sa pamamagitan ng in-depth, unstructured interview. The biographical approach emphasizes the individual's location within a network of social interactions, historical events, and life experiences.
These are some of the most common methods that will help you to gather qualitative data. Interviews. Personally, asking people questions in one-on-one -on -one conversation. Conducting in-depth interviews is one of the most common qualitative research methods. Interview can be performed face-to-face -face or over the phone. Lalo na ako ang research mo is discussing sensitive issues. Second, focus group. Another form of interview that aims to ask questions and generate discussion among a group of people. A focus group usually includes a limited number of respondents around 6 to 10 persons. Through focus group discussion, it promotes deeper understanding and more meaningful exchange of ideas among group members. Its advantage is that members may ask questions, can do also follow-up questions, they can add answer or defer the other's answer, uh, it may form a debate or support each other's statement. Third, surveys. Survey is not only for quantitative research, it may also use in qualitative research. A researcher administered questionnaires with open-ended questions. So here are the example. These questions cannot be answered by simply yes or no. Observations, recording what you have seen, heard, or encountered in detailed field notes. It can be in the form of journal or diaries, especially for ethnographic research. Kung ano yung relevant na nakita mo, narinig, or naramdaman. Observation can be done while letting the observing people know that she or he is being observed or without letting him know. Observation can also be made in natural setting as well as in artificially created environment. Observation is not only limited on observing your subject person. Uh, malabak ito, maaari kang pwedeng pagkuhan ng mga datos when you are doing observation. It can be a form of product, materials, data notes, or the people around the subject, or the setting, or its environment. <laughs> Last, secondary research. Collecting existing data in the form of text, image, audio, or video recordings, etc. Existing data is summarized and collected to increase the overall effectiveness of a research since it can capture the past change and developments. These documents can be made available by public libraries, websites, data obtained from already filled surveys, and etc. The review of literature in any research is based on secondary data. For example, uh, let's say census data. You can use census data to analyze the impact of education on career choice and earnings. That is the introduction to qualitative research, the approaches and methods. So there are lots of exciting topics that can be done in qualitative research. Its natural characteristic enable you as a researcher to develop many skills. So if you are planning to conduct qualitative research, you may go back to this video to help you to identify what approach is suitable for your research problem and what types of data you may use in your research. We hope you learned something new from this video. Thank, Thank you, you and have, have a nice day. day. If you like this video, you may subscribe 
and hit the notification bell for more research-related videos. Again, this is me, Miss Hazel, and Miss Cash from, from Research, research team. team. Annyeong! Annyeong.